Um, so hello everyone. <laughs> uh, my name is Seth Barakusi and today I'm going to present to you um, blockchain development with Python on the Tezos blockchain platform using SmartPy library. Right. So uh, first of all, let me start with introduction, introducing myself to you <coughs> on my social media. So. Uh, this is me on Twitter. If you just search for Seth Marcusi, you find me there. Uh, also, this is me on Facebook. You have to search for Jess Marcusi and you find me on Facebook. And this is me on LinkedIn. All right. Oh uh, no. All right. So that that is LinkedIn. Very, um. Yeah. So you you get to know any everything you want to know about me from there. <coughs> All right. So thank you for your patience and letting me present my social media to you. So um, before I even go deep into what we are about, the main talk for uh, the main topic for this talk, um, I'd like to, I mean, take you through. Uh, table of content so so um, <clears throat> this is what we're going to do before we, we even start talking about these we are going to talk about the history of blockchain I'm going to talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum and then we we'll finally go to Tezos and then we talk about smart contract we talk about smart pi and then we have a coding example and the coding example is an interesting one we're going to consider is a land registry i mean if you've heard of blockchain and all the bars around it you know that land registry is one of the applications big applications of blockchain right so why is it so because blockchain is basically like public record right it's a kind of record or it's a kind of uh let me say database where everyone any party can at all can observe this database right so Unlike maybe um, traditional uh, traditional uh, applications, um, you can't go and um, ask an organization to give you their database for you to look through it. All you can see from the what you know about that organization's application is is um, the, the the data they are showing you through their interface, right? But with blockchain, you can actually Query the blockchain itself, the database itself, with no restrictions, right? And then you can get the data. So land registry is like, okay, fine. We want to say who owns which part of the world. You know, let me just say that instead of saying which part of the country, but I mean, if I say which part of the world, it's still the same thing, right? And we are going to take it as a very interesting approach here. So who owns which part of the world? That's the question. And <coughs> If we had to say, okay, fine, let's record this in a database, in a hidden database where third parties cannot really see into this database. The only part, the only way they can see this database is through some um, UI that some company has built. Then that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? We want a database where everyone can see what is going on in the database. Right? And a good, a good example of such a database is what the blockchain. And yeah, so. You also learn that blockchain is not, even though I'm referring to blockchain as a database, it's not mainly a database, right? It's not just a database, right? And we, we will understand why I'm saying that. So, uh, what's the history of blockchain? I mean, blockchain started with academic papers, right? And you can see here I have, say, Bitgold. So, Bitgold actually came up in a paper someone wrote in the 1980s and 1990s, right? And this researcher, was talking about something called bit code which is an electronic means of transfer which doesn't involve any uh, middle party so first of all let me just say let me just say this let me just put this into into um uh into the into the system so say that we have um right let's take an uh, example of a very popular uh, digital payment system like PayPal, right? So yes, PayPal. Okay. Uh, 
huh? and they are here and what PayPal has is a database okay containing like so users so we may say user A maybe has a, a certain balance right of money of say 10 and user B has money 20 and then user C has money 40 right <laughs> the 4 didn't come out well but that's fine right so now that's a better 4 sorry but I have to get this 4 right hmm. good so we have a 4 now right and so they have like a database which holds like the balance of each user and so if say a right let me use a different color wants to send some money to say b right through paypal first of all paypal to get a transaction a is saying i want to send money to b so people will go and check um, let's say a wants to send an amount of five to b people will go and check okay can a send that money the question is can a send the money and yeah that's that's true because if i check a is sending five and a has ten so it's possible right so what people do detect five from a Sorry, let me use a different color for this. The DAX 5. Right. From A. So A will now have a new balance of 5. And would we'll add a 5. To B. So A will, B will now have a new balance of 25. Right. And this is a digital payment system. But the problem is that it has to go through. PayPal. And guys, this is what some people don't like. Oh, this is what, um, yeah, I mean, there's another option where the payment doesn't have to go through a centralized body, you know, because people don't like the idea that their money has to be controlled by some middle person. You know, if someone has control over your money, they kind of have control over your life in, in many ways, you know, I can realize. So, I mean, to go on with this example, uh, let's say that uh, B now wants to send money to C, right? B is sending 30. Since B is sending to PayPal, PayPal will ask, can B send 30? And the answer is no, B cannot send 30 because i mean b has 25 right yeah right so i mean this is the kind of thing like uh that's one way to do digital payment right <clears throat> and so this is what we call like the centralized approach right so i mean it's a same problem just that this one is centralized so there's a central body that is handling all the payment so not not only paypal but we also have examples like uh, you know visa right uh, and then mastercard i mean and all those credit cards and debit cards right <clears throat> they are all handling your money and they all have the balances of all your accounts guys they know who you are paying and who you are not so um yeah that's a centralized approach to um, digital currency <clears throat> and so blockchain or bitcoin or these reset papers we're trying to find okay i mean we have centralized approach that's quite easy to come up with we want to find a decentralized approach where the money doesn't have to pass through a, a, cent a, a central um, agency right but um so i can be able to send money to someone right and we'll talk about the double spending problem but um before that 
So that's that's what these academic papers were about, beat gold and all of those things. And they were interesting papers. And even in those times, someone mentioned smart contract. I mean, those guys were visionaries, serious. <clears throat> so after that, yes, 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 you can see a lot, a lot of time passed. And then someone named Satoshi Nakamoto. I won't say someone, but I'll say an entity. And this entity I'm referring could be a person or, a, or an organization because up to now, no one knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is. And so I prefer to call Satoshi Nakamoto an unknown entity. <laughs> yeah. So he wrote a bit. Oh, sorry. So this entity, Satoshi Nakamoto, wrote the Bitcoin white paper and he did not implement the code himself because according to the programmers who did, they said Satoshi Nakamoto, it did seem like a really good programmer because, I mean, they contacted him throughout writing the thing and some of the ideas he gave were, you know, I mean, he gave advice as he was very good with theoretical stuff, but when it comes to actually writing the code, I mean, he didn't follow certain standards, which, I mean, that's what according to them, but I don't know. So, I mean, this was also some just people trying to find some clue to kind of uh, <coughs> find out who Satoshi Nakamoto is. Uh, so, yeah. And so, Bitcoin is actually um, an open source project, and I can, I will go to their GitHub right bitcoin github i'll go to their github and you see actually it's a github project it's an open source project and so actually anyone who wants to um contribute can actually go and contribute so bitcoin just think of it as an open source project but now the code implementation is an open source project so all programmers who are interested in bitcoin We'll just go and implement and it is what you call a public blockchain right just like the blockchains i'm, I'm going to talk about here ethereum and tezos these are all public blockchains right and so <clears throat> after bitcoin came and then people realized oh okay we could have other forms of cryptocurrency right so people started doing something we call the altcoins right and i'm not going to go deep into the altcoins but one good example is the bitcoin cash and so the question is how do altcoins come about right so how do altcoins come about and the answer is that you know uh the blockchain like when we have a public blockchain right is mostly like a network of i mean a lot of people who come together right to set up something called nodes we we'll go into this later but uh I mean, and these nodes are what form part of the network, right? And they can talk to each other, so it's, it's kind of something bizarre. So, uh, yeah. So, what happened is that these nodes communicate based on a certain rules and regulations, right? For instance, they say that uh, one of the rules and regulations is that every 10 minutes, right a new blog is created a new block right every 10 minutes so you understand what a block is if you don't understand right so meaning that if if you make a transaction in bitcoin right it will take at least 10 minutes for it to um to appear or to to take effect so for instance if, I, if you send money bitcoin to someone to take at least 10 minutes right but usually it takes more than that because People need to verify that it does really happen, right? So there were some people who said, "Wait, look, we can make this one faster than ten minutes. We can even make it one minute, right?" And some say we can make make seventeen seconds or something. And you know that you realize this seventeen seconds I've said is not random. I actually come down to it. But then there were some people in the community who said no we still want the 10 minutes and some people said no we want the one we want to increase the speed some said no 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 whatever happened and so what happened was that those people who want who wanted the faster transaction time made a fork right of the the bitcoin uh, uh, repository and then they created their own network right so for instance an example is a bitcoin cash there's a bitcoin cash right 
So Bitcoin Cash is it's not Bitcoin, it's Bitcoin Cash. It's a fork. As you can see, it's a fork of Bitcoin. It's a spin-off or altcoin that was created in 2017. Right? And and that the main reason for that is that they wanted faster transaction, right? So that's the point of it. So that's Bitcoin Cash for you. So that's how altcoins came along. And there are a lot of altcoins actually, guys. A lot of altcoins. And I'm not really gonna go to altcoin because it's whole messy and there's no order to everything. I don't really like things that are messy, so <laughs> yeah. So after all these altcoins came, um the next thing that we have is Ethereum, right? So Ethereum says it wants to be the first to win complete smart contract platform on the blockchain. What does that mean? <laughs> so you know in Bitcoin you can write something called smart contract with a little bit of piece of code that is stored on the blockchain and this code can be you can interact with this code and all of that. So but what happens is that this code, this smart contract, um the language is not Turing complete. So example it doesn't have for loops. Right? And imagine writing code without for loops. <laughs> so that's not even complete. I mean you can't do certain things, right? Yeah. So the the goal of Ethereum was to be a Turing complete smart contract platform. So with Turing complete smart contract platform, that means that this increases the um vast amount of applications that can be built with Ethereum, right? So this is a great, 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 uh, sorry, um, improvement from Bitcoin. So actually, Ethereum is also a public uh, blockchain. Ethereum. I don't know whether it's on GitHub or something, but anyway, yeah, it's on GitHub. So, yeah. Mm. Well, 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 well. well. So actually, so yeah, you can see they have a lot of projects here, really, really a lot. In fact, Ethereum is working on a lot of projects I, I don't even follow. Uh, so it's also a public blockchain, and that was a huge step. That's why I've put in it here because it's it Ethereum started like first successful implementation of this Turing complete platform. And uh, so Ethereum, you you could write code in something called Solidity, which looked like JavaScript, and you could write your code like normal code. And this code will be stored on the blockchain. And one advantage of code being on the blockchain is that one, everybody can see this code. But right? it's different from storing, um, writing maybe Python code, like some Django code. Right? Not everyone can see the code because it's on your server. Unless the person has access to your server, they cannot see the code. But with this one, everyone can see whatever code is written on, uh, on the blockchain. But everyone can see any information on the blockchain, including whatever code is there. The only thing is that they can't change it. So easy. This brings into light a lot of interesting things, right? So, so for instance, like when you mention one of the applications of blockchain, someone says voting, right? I mean, we could have voting applications where it doesn't need a blockchain. But the point is that if we are going to use it, we want to do anything serious. I think voting application needs to be done on the blockchain. Why? Because look, it doesn't matter the test we run or whatever things we have. I still want to see the code as, it, as the voting is happening and you can do that with a smart contract right because the smart contract one we know that this is where the, everything is this is the smart contract that is going to take care of this voting thing uh, you can continue verifying it throughout the period of the voting to see oh okay the code hasn't changed or no one has made it anything right so for something like this a smart contract or the public blockchain is really really important all right and so from ethereum we come to Tezos. So Tezos is also a smart contract platform, during complete actually, just like Ethereum. But the, the, the reason why Tezos came is to solve certain problems that Bitcoin and Ethereum had. First of all, Bitcoin, and one of the problems I'll mention is the issue of the forking. So you remember I mentioned like Bitcoin Cash. So what bit happened Bitcoin Cash is that some people, there was some disagreement in the community and then some people decided to go their way and then they, they make a fork of the fork of the code they change certain parameters and they have their own chain right so this will split the network right so maybe if there are 100 people and 50 of them disagree and let's say maybe 30 of them wanted bitcoin cash then what will happen is that those 30 of them will leave and then now bitcoin will be only what 70 
right? So it, it reduces the, the strength of Bitcoin in some way. But I mean, Bitcoin, as we can all see, has survived because yeah, it's currently, I mean, I can't help myself with this, but Bitcoin price. Damn. I mean, this is what me in Ghana City. But so let's see. In US dollars. Oh, man. Uh, what the heck is US dollars? Oh, man. Uh, hmm. Look, okay, we can't find US, we can't still find pounds. And it's 7,498 pounds. <laughs> yeah, if you have one Bitcoin, just send it to me. I'll make my Bitcoin account available and you can send me just one Bitcoin. Right. anyway so that's just by the way so yeah so that's the history and for me i i you can find me here right so Tezos itself is like two years old since it has been launched officially it's like maybe two years old or something because it was launched in 2018 or in 2020 right so the way i realized on online they were celebrating their baby or something like that anyway so <clears throat> uh from 2014 to 2016 this was just white code white paper and code implementation but from 2016 to 2018 a lot of things happened you know that's not the topic of this subject but after 2018 everything was okay and then the tezos platform was launched and uh, so tezos is not that old compared to bitcoin which was launched in somewhere i don't know is it 2010 or something yeah so it's kind of the new kid right and yeah it really has questions and so that's where we're going to go into those right now and yeah so now that we are done with the introduction the i mean the history and all of that i mean i i, I just have to do that part now we can go to how blockchain works okay all right yeah so next we move on to how blockchains work right so i'll go i'll say without any reservations that i mean any kind of blockchain that you've ever heard of you know whether it's bitcoin or some altcoin or ethereum or tezos they all have some of these components in fact, all of these components are available in them, whether directly or indirectly, whether they like it or not. And so this summarizes in in uh, in one screen how blockchains work. And that is it, right? So we let's start um, with the networks and nodes, right? So a blockchain is essentially a computer network, okay? So um it's a network of nodes so wh when we say nodes here yeah, don't think too far nodes are just computer servers that participate in the blockchain network nodes can enter and leave at any time you know so um it's like that like in fact you can participate in any blockchain network with your laptop i mean um but however it depends on the strength of your laptop or something or you can use a strong server computer or something right the point is that the blockchain is a network right it is a network of nodes however these nodes communicate based on certain rules okay and that's what makes it um a blockchain um, and we will get there but basically first of all let me just even draw this so we have nodes now blockchain right nodes 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 and nodes are server or uh, computers that participate in the blockchain so very soon you get to know what i mean by participate and these nodes they talk to each other right they talk to each other they talk to each other so so it's kind of like if you have a network topologies 
don't know this is what they call the mesh topology or something i mean any node the point is that any node can talk to any node i'm not going to remember names but that's it all right so this node can ask this node for something this node can ask this node for something and by nodes i mean computer networks or computer servers so we'll get we'll get back to that later and then the next component is transactions and smart contracts right so you let's say transactions so transactions are broadcast to all nodes in the network transactions mutate the state of blockchain so what is a transaction So at a very um, basic level, all right, uh, let me just use a simple example for what a transaction is. So uh, a transaction, a simple example is, okay, I want to send this amount of Bitcoin from my address to this address. That is, what, that is an example of a transaction. But a transaction could also be as complex as a smart contract. In fact, a transaction could contain anything, right? And the reason why I said transactions and smart contracts is that basically, in in recent blockchains, we are seeing that transactions are kind of the same as smart contracts because even in a blockchain to send maybe money to someone from one address to another address, basically what you are doing is you are executing a smart contract, right? Yeah, so. You are writing a piece of code that says um, this is the person who can get the money or something. For instance, in Bitcoin, um, to transfer money to someone is not as simple as say this person has a, an account, right? It's not as simple as say this person has an account and this B also has an account. And then I'm transferring money to B. No. And then it will detect. And then it will add to B. No. The point is that, of course, they have an account. We ha They have what we call an address, right? And everyone in the network has um, what we call a public key. Hmm? Public key, usually denoted as PBK. And then a private key, right? Private key. Okay. So when we say you send, when I say you send money to um, someone's address, what I mean is send money to. So an address is basically the hash. Okay. Of the public key. And you, if you know. If you are familiar with what a hash is, it's a one-way function, right? So um, it takes an input and it gives um, the same output for that input, right? But then also it ensures that when you need to change the input, the output also changes dramatically, right? So an example of a hash is we have the SHA-256 hash and uh, md5 yeah so i'm sure you've heard of md5 um so there's this website hash yeah right right so i just want to demonstrate what a hash is right so i mean this these are some of the things you need to understand when you want to do a blockchain or something like that, right? So where's a hello there? Ooh. Oh, I mean this is not really there. I want okay. So hello. You see, and there's a hash, right? This is a SHA-256 hash, okay? Hello world. Hmm? If I change even 
this to dot if i if i add even a dot here just notice what happens changes dramatically right so that's what the hash is so it takes whatever you have here which is looking nice and then turns it to something which looks not like what you had initially and you can't come back from here to here right so that's what the hash is so it's a one-way function right you can go from your original text to the hash but you can't go from the hash to the original text right so basically every account on say bitcoin blockchain and in fact other all other blockchains have what we call the public key and the private key and then the address is the hash of the public key right so the private key is private and this is what you need to keep secret so this is where you can hear people saying okay i'm keeping it on a certain device or maybe I'm, I'm storing it on the cloud storage or something right you just the point is you need to keep this thing secret right maybe people write it down and then they put it in their safe boxes or something and anytime you need to make any transaction on the blockchain you need your private key in order to make the transaction right but a public key or maybe say your public the hash of your public key is what is available for everyone to um, see what is it's available for everyone so if you want to send money to some, someone basically you are sending to the hash of their public key right yeah so and what you are doing is that bitcoin how it does this is it writes a little bit a piece of code right and then this code um i don't know if let me try to see if i can find it here for you so i feel like it's it's really interesting to see right yeah i found it so here is it right so basically sending money to someone what is happening is you are, this is the code you are writing for the person you are writing this code and then so, I mean, this is done automatically. You don't write it and so But basically, this is written. And it says, op dup, op hash 160. So, this is like um, operations on the Bitcoin blockchain. And this is what um, uh, kind of like locks money into a, a certain public key hash. And the, only, the, only, the person who can get this amount or spend whatever is locked here. Is the one who has a private key right and so um you can look at this and you can go and read more over there your uh, bitcoin is not in our um focus now but basically they, they go ahead to show you like what is happening right it's interesting actually so yeah so it's not like necessarily like a debit and credit something no basically it's a smart contract so this this in itself is a smart contract mm -hmm. yeah there's a little piece of code which needs to be executed and then the output needs to be true if 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 let's say you have the private key then the output will be true if you don't have the private key the output will be false and it means you can't spend whatever money is locked up here right so that's what well, transactions and smart contracts so a blockchain then a blockchain is how it works is that nodes send these transactions to each other these are little pieces of information right so let's say there's an outside user who wants to send money to someone this outside user will instruct a node that hey i want to send money from uh, my public key or my account to another account and this node will then broadcast right it will tell the other nodes so the other nodes will also will keep it in mind Right. Then someone else who can also make the same request to this node, and this node has to broadcast. I mean, so that's how this node, these nodes interchange information, and anyone can join this node. Right. In this case, this user is not a node; it's just a user using one of the nodes, right, or one of the servers. It's like um, 
logging on to Facebook, when you connect to Facebook, you are connected to Facebook service, right? But here, when you want to maybe spend on a blockchain, you are connected to the other service on the blockchain. And the difference between what the Facebook example and this is that this in the Facebook example, all the servers belong to Facebook. But in this example, the service belongs to different people, right? And even you yourself as a user can set up your own node and then start, you know, um, receiving transactions and all of that. But to use a blockchain, you don't need to have a node yourself because there are other nodes set up, right? And so the question is, why would someone set up a node or set up a server just to run this on the blockchain? I mean, it costs money. So why would they do that, right? Yeah. So the next thing is, uh, so when nodes like transactions are generated and are shared between these blockchains or these nodes, the next thing is consensus and blockchain creation, right? So let me clear what is here. No. Mm. So, uh, to block, so I mean, I mean that the whole thing is named now that blocks. So, I mean, it's fine. It's fair to think that that's the important part of this. So, what is a block? Right. So let's just visualize a block as a block. But basically, it's just a collection of transactions, right? T1, T2, and, and then a whole lot of transactions come in play, right? Yeah. So basically, as I, we said, transactions, um, when... A transaction is sent to one node, a block will broadcast this transaction to the other nodes. So this guy says, hey, I want to send money to this person, right? So this node will broadcast it to all these nodes and say, hey, this guy wants to send money to this person. And this, this one also pass it along and pass it along. And before you know it, everyone in the network knows. I mean, this will take some time, but uh, based on later, network latency and all of that. But as time goes on, everyone who knows, everyone will know, all right? So, um, with transactions, like just single pieces of uh, instructions, right? But uh, the blockchain doesn't immediately, I mean, record transactions into its database. So you can think of the blockchain. What it does is, over a period of time, it collects all the transactions that have happened over that period of time and put it them together and this is what we call a block right so a block is just a collection of transactions so in bitcoin for instance it collects um a, a block is created every 10 minutes right and part of the time is used to collect all the transact trans, uh, transactions um and then most of the time is used to compute a certain proof that indeed you collected the transactions and so um that's a consensus and block creation and so i mentioned i mentioned a certain proof right so in bitcoin we have this thing called a proof of work right so let's say uh you collect a certain amount of transactions in a block right now that's not the end of it in the block itself, you need to find something called the nonce, right? N O N, the nonce. Sorry, N O N C. And this nonce is just think of it as just a random number, right? It's just a random number. And this random number, you need to find a random number here and add it to all the transactions you've had in such a way that when you hash this block okay you are going to get a certain value right of course in this value when we convert them to zeros and ones so it should have a certain number of zeros at the beginning right 
and the only way to do this is to find a random number compute the hash and then check if the zero the number of zeros at the beginning satisfy the condition so you can say okay when you find a random number and you compute the hash we have we need five zeros at the beginning so until you do that and you find five zeros you are not going to yeah yeah you don't have the, the correct uh nonce and you can't you need to keep on doing this and i prop up apparently this is actually a difficult task and this could take like 10 minutes for one of the servers to find it actually but this actually takes 10 minutes because there are a lot of servers working trying to find the nonce right so if there are a lot of servers trying to find the nonce by almost someone will find it in 10 minutes but if there was only one server to take it the rest of the world to do that right so basically um that is how like once you find the nonce then it means that you created this blog and then you can share this blog with other what other nodes and then what they'll do is to add it to the blogs that they already have right and this continues so after a blog is created and all that then all the other nodes will start working on a new blog and then someone will find the nodes and they'll start working on a new blog and then it keeps on going right and so that's why this is called a blockchain right because when i get a new blog i add it to the old blog and then i get a new blog and i add it to the old blog the new blog and I add it to the old blocks right? and they are added in such a way that um if you kind of remove this block right then this block will become invalid kind of so i mean we don't want to go deep into that so basically this is what is called a proof of work right looking for this uh hash so that the number of leading zeros is um, a certain specified number and based on that number this if if we uh, when you increase the number of leading zeros the time it takes to find this number um also increases okay so yeah so that is how it's done in bitcoin and ethereum and this is what is called the proof of work right so power networks so in bitcoin and ethereum the way blocks are created is you have to find this nonce such that when i hash the whole block i'll get a certain leading number of zeros right and this is what is called the proof of work and it's nice but in tezos it doesn't use the proof of work uses something called the proof of stake All right and i will go into this proof of stake later okay so i mean that's now we understand this and then the last thing is the protocol upgrade and governance so a blockchain is basically made up of a set of protocols right so like how do we determine that a transaction is valid right so for instance someone wants to send money from one address to another address i mean with the way we determine is we see if the the money there where the addresses they are trying to send the money from has the balance necessary so for instance if this address wants to send a, a certain amount x right what we do is we'll check the address a to see if indeed it can send that amount x so that's one way of making sure that i mean a transaction is valid another way is to um so that's one of the rules i mean it's a basic thing but another thing is that it takes for instance in bitcoin it takes 10 minutes it's supposed to take 10 minutes and this the, the system has been coded in that way that it's supposed to take 10 minutes for a new block to be created right so if it doesn't take 10 minutes or uh, or it takes less time then the system itself will adjust itself so that next time to take 10 minutes and this is like uh the protocol right so it follows a certain set of protocols like what should happen in which case and whatever so if you remember the example i made with bitcoin cash and all of that that because bitcoin takes 10 minutes um some people said all right we want to speed it up you know and yeah so you should also notice that ethereum takes like seven seconds to create sorry 17 seconds approximately 
to create a blog, right? So it is that fast, even though it's also using proof of work. Um, kind of uh, blog creation. So, <clears throat> so the, 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 at some point, we, we might want to change the rules. For instance, in Bitcoin, at some point, people want to change that. Okay, instead of taking 10 minutes to create a blog, we want to take less than that to create a blog, right? And what happened was that um, some people didn't understand and some people understood. And what happened was that they split it, the network split it. And this is what is called a fork based mechanism. Fork as in F O R K, right? So if, if you are familiar with open source project, when someone forks a project, basically they make a copy of it and then they start writing their own, adding their own stuff to it, right? So this is what happens in, um, in blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Right, so when there's a misunderstanding, right, then, then what happens is that people just split, go their own ways, right. So in, the, in in the case of Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, they both went their own ways. Bitcoin kept on being Bitcoin. Bitcoin Cash say, hey, you know, we want faster transactions, and so they made a fork of Bitcoin, and then they reduced the the block creation time so that the transactions would be what be fast, right. And Ethereum itself also um, has very fast transactions, right? And it also does this. So Ethereum also kind of, you could say it also came out of the frustrations like of I mean, slow transactions in Bitcoin. And then they decided to solve this problem. And also the fact that Bitcoin didn't want to improve it on its smart contract uh, platform. So Ethereum decided that no, we want to build our own stuff here. Right, so, but in Tezos, okay, so one of the one of the things you realize in Tezos is that Tezos has actually solved this problem in such a way that instead of the network being split or instead of people going their own ways, we actually vote on ideas, right? And this is this is what is called on chain, and we vote on ideas. Okay, okay, this we want this, we want this, we want this. We all come together, we vote. And then the best ideas win, and then those are the ideas that will be implemented into the network, right? So we, in the end, will not have someone going their way to go and fork, because the more the, the more there are people leaving the original thing to go and do their own thing, the less like valuable this original thing becomes, because then like the people who have been there and have now left, right? So, um, yeah. So that's that for how blockchains work. So just so Bitcoin, this is the very first cryptocurrency platform. The inception of which introduced blockchain technologies. And Bitcoin is, as we've already seen, is very highly uh, has a very high financial value. The block creation speed is low, right? And then the protocol upgrade and governance is poor. I mean, anything that's fork based has a, that uses a fork based mechanism is poor because I mean it keeps on splitting the network. People keep on leaving, and yeah, so it's not good for anything. So, but Bitcoin itself is very valuable, and yeah, but so that is just like a strength kind of thing. So the next thing is Ethereum. Ethereum also has yeah some kind of good financial value the block creation speed yeah it's not as good but definitely faster than uh okay so this 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 should have been this and this should have been this. anyway so anyway it's definitely faster than bitcoin don't get me wrong but the upgrade per mechanism is the same thing as bitcoin uses right so it's not that good also but it's faster than bitcoin it takes about 17 seconds to create a block you can you imagine that that is really really fast right yeah <clears throat> and because i'm a tezos guy of course anything i say i'll say in favor of tezos so uh, um yeah anyway then the last tezos it takes a lot of lessons from your predecessors so the it's protocol and upgrade protocol upgrade and governance mechanism is really good. 
it block creation speed is fast right it's faster than ethereum so but you should know that ethereum is also very fast right but i mean the transaction speed is faster than ethereum so be so Tezos has about 40 to 50 transactions per second and ethereum will have about say um yeah so so yeah our next stop finally we are here to the main talk of the day to the main topic of the day that's a smart contract right so um yeah let's get started with the smart contract all right so next up we talk about the smart pie sorry we talk about what is a smart contract right so we are done explaining the basics of blockchain and all of that and we've gone into results and that so let's talk about smart contract because that's what we are here to talk about right so a smart contract is a piece of code that is deployed onto a blockchain platform it is usually made up of code and a data structure that can be manu manipulated by the code since it is deployed to the blockchain it is publicly transparent and immutable so let me just explain what i read it's a piece of code i mean yeah like a piece of code right that is deployed onto the blockchain platform and that is why it is called a smart contract so when you have code that is deployed onto a blockchain platform we call it smart contract i mean that's that's the best explanation i've heard so far <laughs> Ah, uh, and of course it's it's made up of code and then um some sort of data structure that is attached to this code think of it as like a, the storage for the code and then you can store certain stuff there so let me just try to illustrate something so let's see, see this is a smart contract all right this whole thing is a smart contract oh you know So this whole thing is a smart contract all right and then you can divide it into two and say well we have the code somewhere here and then we have the storage the storage all right so this is where we store data is stored right in the smart contract okay so keep that in mind and in this smart contract <coughs> finds a software on the blockchain right so this smart contract this is code and storage and is placed on the blockchain right so bitcoin has smart contract ethereum has smart contract and of course tezos also has smart contract and so we are going to look today at writing smart contract in tezos using a specific python library called a smart pi library right so another thing is that is deployed onto the blockchain and, and you know we know that blockchain is kind of a public thing it's a public data <coughs> it's a public database right so anyone can go and view what is on the blockchain so when you deploy code onto or when you deploy a smart contract onto the blockchain anyone can go onto the blockchain and read the code of the smart contract and also see the data associated with it so for instance let me just go to um this uh, place this <coughs> so um, something i haven't mentioned yet is what is called um block explorers so what's a blog explorer right so as i mentioned that a blockchain is essentially a public database anyone can query this database and, and have access to all the data on the blockchain just that you can't change it but you can query it 
you know you can change it without a right author or authorization or something but you can definitely query it right so a blog explorer is just like um basically a website <coughs> that someone has written querying a blockchain right so in fact if you are paranoid enough and you think that you don't believe other what other people have done you can go and write your own code to explore the blockchain put down the data and then display it right so for Tezos, <coughs> there's this very um interesting blog explorer that we're going to look at right now uh and specifically for smart contracts and all of that so uh Mm. So, yeah, so it's called Better Call Dev. So, Better Call Dev, I'll just change this to here. It's a, it's a Tezos Blood Explorer. So, let's pick a random smart contract. We pick a random smart contract, and what can we see? <coughs> you can see here we have the storage, right. So here you'll be able to see like what has been stored in the smart contract so far and then we have the code right and this code is is written in what what we call Michelson because on the Tezos blockchain the main code that runs on the Tezos blockchain is Michelson right so that what you're about to learn that smart pi once you write smart pi it compiles into Michelson right so the advantage of this is that it doesn't compile into some sort of byte code zeros and ones that humans can read so the Tezos uh, developers they chose like this Mikkelsen because this is readable by humans I mean if you understand the Mikkelsen kind of stuff you can actually write code directly in Mikkelsen um, the point is that looking at this is not that convenient you agree with me right and so if you look here you can see it defines something the parameter is also defines the storage and then it comes to define what the code and because it's a stack based language and all of that i mean i mean the first time i heard about it i said no nah. and i had oh right you can write it in you can write in smart uh, python and then it will compile here and i said all right then no need to know what mikkelsen is right so basically when you write your code conveniently in python you get a mikkelsen um code right so Smart Pi will compile that nice Python to some interesting uh, Mikkelsen code that you can use for your stuff. Right? And we probably over here you can interact with the whatever is going on here and that. And I mean, it's, it's interesting looking at what is here. Ah. Anyway. Hmm. Oh, wow. Right, right, right. Okay, let's, so let's not let's not go uh, overboard. So there are a lot of uh, block explorers. In fact, block uh, Bitcoin has block explorers. Ethereum has block explorers, and they are just looking on the data, like on the smart. Uh, they are just looking on the um, the blockchain, and they are querying the data on the blockchain, and they are kind of like displaying it on the internet so everyone can see. And if you don't, um, if you don't believe them, you can go yourself, um, and then go and look at the teasers, um or like there's particular api for that uh, blockchain and then you can also write your own stuff to look at your own things but i mean man how would you do that so that's what a smart contract is just a code right there's a code and a storage nothing more nothing less uh, compared to like what um like a server what you the code you write and put on your server right so you write some code and you put it on your server and this this code um it runs on your server and it has access to some database like mysql or postgre or something it's the same thing right same kind of concept in just that in this case this code is on the blockchain and it has access to its own data structure that you have to define yourself right uh, so 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 then in that case well what are the interesting properties of smart contract why would you write something uh, why would you write a, a smart contract instead of maybe normal code like and put it on your server and let it run I mean, and the, the, the point is that it has certain properties that i would like to point at some of them and these properties makes it possible or makes it like really interesting or it makes it an application very 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 like possible right so um 
First, the smart contracts are publicly transparent since they are deployed to the blockchain. Anyone with access to the blockchain can see the code and data associated with it. Right. So let's go back to an example of block, uh, an example uses of blockchain where people are pushing this kind of voting voting thing. Right. So we want to have a, a some kind of software that facilitates voting, right, or elections, right. And before blockchain and all of that or uh, anything you that software would run on a certain server and not everyone has access to that server so not everyone can see the code on that server or the code that's currently running right but with blockchain as i showed you here right i can use this blog explorer to see the code that is running right and this is the code and actually if i can't understand this i can hire someone to read it and say oh okay so imagine like um, maybe a party, um, you know, when uh, having these elections, they have different 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 parties, you know, uh, trying to win the election and all of that, and you know, everybody is kind of aggressive here. Yeah? So they can hire their own expert who can read and understand what uh, what code is here, and they can verify that indeed the code is doing what it's doing, right? And this is more secure. This is more makes you feel more safer, and everybody uh, feels more like fair because they know like what code is running you know and all that so it's public and that that alone is is an advantage that traditional server you know servers don't have because you need access to the server before you can view the source code right so you, you don't you can't see your php code or your python django code from the browser you have to ask, get access to the server and not everyone is willing to do that so, um yeah smart contracts are immutable right so once they are deployed to the blockchain they cannot be outed so this kind of code here is 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 what is going to be there forever you know nothing can be changed if if we want to change the rules here then we have to update our smart contract code and then create a new address right so we update it we update our smart contract and deploy a new contract and this contract will be in a, a different um kind of will have a different address right because one thing you should notice that on the blockchain everything has an address right so for, for instance for this particular contract this is the address for this particular contract although it's not uh, really stated here so the point is that uh, this code or this contract and whatever is here does not change it's there forever and ever amen right doesn't change doesn't and also one interesting thing is that it offers free data replication right because of the way the blockchain works and since the smart contract is stored on the blockchain and the data associated with the smart contract is stored on the blockchain i mean all the nodes on the blockchain have that smart contract and also the data associated with it now what happens it means that if there are thousand nodes on the blockchain your data is stored on thousand different nodes so can you imagine that this is not you know to for normal cloud services and all of that maybe they can store your data on two or three servers or some backup servers and all of that but you have thousand servers for free without doing anything right not necessarily for free but you know there are cost some costs associated but still the replication is is crazy right so you can store something there and it will be there forever and ever right so these are the proper interesting properties of con smart contracts that um if you think about it yeah it's not it's not surprising that people are making a lot of noise about it because this is this has not been possible till now right so now let's dive just dive into what is smart buy so smart buy is a python library for writing smart contracts that can be deployed on the tezos blockchain platform the, the original smart contract language for Tezos is Mikkelsen, as I explained, right? For this example here, yeah. so let me just pick another one. So this is Mikkelsen, right? Sorry, this is Mikkelsen, okay? So I just click here to see another um, kind of pick a random smart contract, and this is the address of that particular smart contract. And this is the code associated with this smart contract, right? This code, yeah, is Mikkelsen. And as I've already said, 
they don't write Mikos indirectly. I mean, of course, you can write it directly, and yeah, if it's, it's a language, I mean, it can be written directly, but really, uh, you know. So, if you have, if you know Python, then you don't have to worry about Mikos. You can just write in SmartPy, and then to compile to Mikos. So SmartPy allows you to write your code in Python and then compile it, your Python code to Mikkelsen, right? So that's that's it. So then uh, let me let's let's write before so we are just going to the goal is that I'm just going to do some uh, interesting example with you with this, a simple land registry smart contract example, right? So if if you had one of the um, interesting applications of smart contracts is land registry right so we are going to learn how to create a smart contract on the digital platform with smart by to build a simple decentralized land registry application it should be able to assign the geographical rectangles to real world users so in this in this use case we are saying oh man we, are, we just want to build a smart contract and say that look tell me like the four points of your land and I'll store these four points right on the smart contract and then I will assign it to your address right so that means it belongs to you by address I mean your address on the on the blockchain right because I mentioned that on the blockchain everyone has three things that is there uh, yeah they are um, public key, they are private key, and then they are pu public key hash, right? So basically, when we when you hear someone saying that your address, your, your 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 blockchain address, they are talking about the public key hash, right? Yeah. So we we'll get we we'll get to see all of this, right? Once we are, we are, we start. With a smart buy so we just want to say hey give me four points on the earth prove that is yours right so because the way land registry works it for now i just run it right in a simple application where those who have already registered their land can register their land can then now submit their land to our smart contract you understand so this is how it will happen we are going to have people called and um, should be able to assign the vertical rectangles to real world users. All this info is stored publicly on the smart contract. Users should be able to transfer part of their land to other users, right? So now, once you're able to, um, we accept, we you prove to others the land belongs to you, right? By showing us a certificate and all of that, you show us the land certificate and everything. Then we will store it on our smart contract for you, right? And assign it to your what? address right your address once you assign this to your address that means since it's your address you are the only one who have access to the private key and so only you can decide can can have can sell can can have access to that right so we will we'll get into that soon so you prove to us that oh the line belongs to me by showing us you're already registered land that you've registered with the land registry so we are not focusing on any country or something as i said it doesn't matter which part of the world you are in right you just show us proof that this land is yours we prove it and then we digitize the land on the smart contract for you once that is done you can sell parts of the land right you just will transfer part of your land to other users so let's go deep into what we're saying so we are going to on this on this um application we are going to have a special users called the registrars so the registrars are those users that we have authorized to be able to add land onto the smart contract so if you want to add your land onto our smart contract you go to the registrars right and the registrars will verify your documents and then after that they will add it to the smart contract for you right and then uh so this in practice could be corporations and land agencies in various countries now when a land order is a land owner is ready to put their land on our smart contract 
they must contact the registrar and prove to them that they actually own the land. Yes. Once this is done, the registrar assigns the rectangular coordinate of the land to the public key of the the public key hash of the owners, right? So you, as I said, you give them your public key hash and the document to prove that indeed the land is yours and then to assign the land to your public key hash. And then what happens next? So we assume that the land can be represented as four points of longitude and latitude, right? So this point is actually longitude and latitude, right? So X, Y, right? For now, let's do something simple like that x y x1 y1 whatever so longitude latitude four points and then we have a land right now land owners can be able to um split their land so, so let's say you you say this is your land right and we prove that this indeed this is your land now the land will be split split into meter squares right and then you you can assign prices the price per meter square right so let's say that the whole land could cost maybe uh um so on the smart contract once you digitize the land on the smart contract for you that means that although it's land now it has been digitized so you can break it down right and you sell the pieces so that means this piece can be owned by someone else and this piece can be owned by someone else right yeah so uh land owners can now sell pieces of land the smallest piece is a square meter land owners must list the prices per smallest unit right so for example all right so let, let let's now dive into the code okay and it's through this code that i'm going to explain to you like um the smart pie and everything because i just wanted this to be very practical all right so Let's continue with smart pie, right? <laughs> so yeah, smart pie. You can find smart pie on smartpie.io, right? So this is your website, and when you go there, you see we have the they have an online editor. And that's what we are going to use in this um, uh, short tutorial. Um, so now that we've covered the basis of blockchain and everything, I mean we are just ready to move and start writing our our land registration smart contract on a smart pie platform right so what we have here um yeah they have the uh, um online editor here so when i go there you see i have uh, i already have some code so i'm just going to try to increase the size here so that you can all see what is going on here and then you can see that they are so good so they have newcomer template right so just go ahead and click on the newcomer template and so we are here this is smart by io4 slash dev which is from here they also have a command line interface so that means you can write you can decide not to use your online compile at your online uh, environment but i mean even personally for production purposes i mean still use the online stuff so there is nothing wrong with that so um yeah so they try to just explain how it works here so you see you write a python and then the python um compiles your they, they have a, a, an engine that compiles your python into mikkelsen and this mikkelsen um is what i showed you the other time uh yeah so we'll see that very soon right so this is their website you can all check it out and also they have a reference manual here right so if i go to here help let me open it in a new tab so we have help and then you see reference manuals when i click on your reference manual uh i can see like you know what i can do with smart bike over here 
and so we are going to go through most of these over here right so basically you have loading blocks expressions commands entry points all of that over here interesting stuff really interesting stuff so since smart pi is a, a python library so yeah just let's just go ahead and say okay we want a template right so we just need to have a, a boiler template to start with which is good so minimal template and to load it fast right so as you can see on line one it's important smart pi let me still increase this more it's important smart pi as sp and then it already has a class which is used which is uh, inheriting from the sp dot contract right what is, is the sp we are talking about right so we are going to change this name to land register our land register contract right so this sp dot contract refers to a contract that can be deployed onto the Tezos blockchain right and so if you are going to write your contract you create a class and then you inherit from sp dot contract and then there, there's one thing you also need to do is to define the init function here so the init function let me just do this so that to be very clear this is the normal python init and then within that you have to call the self dot init right so this self dot init is, is a function that i mean is within this sp guy so yeah and then also they have loads and loads and loads they provide a lot of tools to for loads and loads and for you to be able to run loads and loads and loads of tests right so let's just go ahead and change this to land register tests right right and then let's just clear all of these away uh And just say that and then let's say yeah so something like this and then let's click here and who it runs and you can see so when you make changes here and you click the run here you can see that we have a uh, whatever we type the land register scenario dot h1 it's actually like html so h1 html header one right and that's it and then we call this mass con the, 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 this like this plus which is a smart contract class and then we pass it x equals 12 inside so it just this is just like for the start right so let's clear everything here and just leave this guy right so you can see that this is this is like a test a test scenario so you have sp dot test scenario right meaning that you're about to start writing some tests and then when i say scenario dot h1 it means i want to write something on this side right so h1 say what land register right good so when i run this again it just leaves us with land register good. so now let's let's start with ana analyzing this this class that we have here right now so as i've as i've said this land register inherits from sp dot contract and we have to define the dev init right we have to define the init and also we have to define the self dot init right we have to call the self dot init from here now this keyword argument represents the data that is in our contract so if if i've already explained this i'm saying that i did say that every contract is made up of what the data and then the code right so so let me say there's a data and then this is the code right right so every contract has two things data and then code so you need to keep this in mind every contract has to oh damn it every contract has two things data and code right good so in smart pie right this cell door in it here this is where we define like our data structure so we'll go more into that later so let's go ahead and you know remove this guy from here so this is a class and we are just calling it with some initial parameter right so let's just remove that from here and also now you can see we have here at sp dot entry point right so this is the creator that's the creating a function within this class and the entry point you can think of it like um an endpoint like 
you know if you're familiar with the rest architecture or rest uh, frameworks you know you 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 call some an entry point in the rest framework would be like oh uh, like you know something like uh, abi you know version one for slash user for slash edit for slash one something like that you know so in 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 in, in this case also we have something similar which is called an entry point because once you write this contract and you deploy it onto the blockchain then you can then be able to call a specific function on it okay so with our land register application let's start by defining um some entry point right so let me say register let me say um add land yeah add land and then let's also define another entry point so that means we'll call this entry point where we want to add um, a piece of land to uh, to the contract and so let's go back here so yeah and also yeah so for now let's say add land right so let's, let's just say add land so we have add land to add a piece of land to the contract okay okay <clears throat> so so now let's let's then we i believe with this example the illustration here we have what 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 the, you understand what the entry point means so then let's go next to define our our um our data right so when we initialize the contract right when we initialize the contract uh, in smart file we need to pass it we could pass it some initial data it's not necessarily compulsory maybe our contract doesn't store any data which doesn't make sense in any way but yeah it's possible to have a contract that doesn't store data but in this case we want to store data at least we know that we want to store data about some sort of land right yeah so um one thing we need to do is that we need to take notice that uh we want to de design a contract that can be managed by someone right so first of all let's say we want a manager right so a manager and uh, let me just say manager because manager right so what i've done here is i've declared to SmartPy that we want to create a data a data structure in um in the contract right called manager and then we are signing it with this initial manager from this class right <clears throat> good so this manager is just an address so if I've, I've, i think i've already explained this but let me just do it again because what i said is every account has three things public key private key and public key hash right so the manager here is the address or let me say the public key hash of someone right who is in charge of the whole contract right and this manager is going to be able to do the following things so manager what can the manager do i can add registers registers right can remove registers i don't know why it just changed to registers yeah so i think we had a wrong spell in there and then yeah so let's for now let's let's leave it at that right so um i'm going to use this to demonstrate to you like how this whole thing works so for now let's let's just uh change this to add register add register register Stra, <laughs> and then remove register right and then uh we're going to say something like to add a register we want to we, as we've already said here a manager can add registers and remove registers so the first thing we want to do is when we call this endpoint add registrar we want to check if the person calling the endpoint is the manager right and so when we look at the reference manual you can see we have something here called uh so let's look for it something um yeah checking condition right <coughs> so sp.verify 
So we check that the Boolean expression condition evaluates to true, right? And then they have SP dot verify equal. It serves the same purpose by checking equality between V1 and V2. All right, all right. That is good. And then we have these specific data types. All right, so now we want to we want to compare the person sending the invoking the contract or running this contract or trying to call this endpoint to the manager that we stored in our data in sorry in our data here here so what we will do is <coughs> we will say sp dot verify equal right and as we've already read over here sp dot verify equal um where is it sp dot verify equal yeah, it serves the same purpose by checking equality between v1 and v2 right okay so good anyway so we want to do is what we want to do is to compare the, the person who sends the contract to the manager we stored here, right? So we are going to say sp dot sp dot sender, right? So what happens is that you know to run or to invoke a smart contract in Tezos, okay, you need to have a Tezos account. By that I mean what I mentioned here earlier on that having a Tezos account. So having a Tezos account means that you have these three things right a, a public key a private key and then a public key hash all right and it's this public key hash that you usually see all right so an example of a public key hash uh We'll see an example of a public key has very soon right so we want to say okay we want to compare that the sender sp dot sender right so that means the person invoking this contract so once this contract is ready we will see that the person invoking this contract is what is referred to as sp dot sender and um it says we we say we want to verify v1 and v2 we want to compare them if they are equal so we say we put v1 here then v2 there right and we've already stored the manager here right so to get access to data within the contract itself you have to say self right dot data okay so this is data that is stored within the contract itself and so if they are equal then we don't have any problem but if they are not then what we are going to say is maybe unauthorized right action um you are not manager and once this contract is invoked right from any um client if the sender is not or the person invoking the the, the contract is not the the manager then what will happen is the person is going to get this unauthorized you are not a manager um, response right so this is you know usually when you're writing uh, this code there are two aspects right this is like the contract aspect and then the client aspect as you know the, the final app that the user will use or maybe a web application and from there you can interact with this contract and there are libraries that to help you do that but that's not the point of this uh, um, tutorial so once we are done with everything here we would we would actually interact with the contract we can actually interact with the contract using smart by itself right i mean their yeah, environment they have all of those um uh things in play okay and so uh and then we want to say we want to add a registrar right but where are we adding the registrar since we, we are we, we we want to we need to define a place where we are going to store the registers right so we're going to say we are going to define another data um, 
registrars and then we are going to say is equal to registrars right and then we are going to so you don't have to always initialize your your smart contract data but in this case we want to once we when we are deploying the contract we want to be able to set some initial registrars or people who can register uh, users on the on the contract and then once the time is the one that is done we can call add registrar to add extra registrars right so that's what we're going to do so um uh we're going to say something like registrars dot add right so what are we adding we are going to since this is endpoint is calling add registrar I mean we are going to add some registrar but from where right so you can see that in this entry point functions we have something called params now it is in this params that uh, contains like all the data we are sending to the smart contracts whilst calling this endpoint right so we are going to get that uh, data from this params so let's say we want to uh, say that um, once we are, when we are calling this add registrar functionality we are going to ha add um, a registrar field to the parameters so to params so let's just say params dot registrar all right so that's it and that's it for that right it adds a new registrar okay so to run it and actually see how this works <laughs> So first of all, let's create. We need to we we, are, we we need to run this test and and test what is happening here. And so for the, for testing purposes, SmartPy allows you to create fake users user account right right in their editor. Okay. So what we have here. Uh, so when you go to test and test scenarios, that's where you see everything regarding tests right and we're going to find the plus yes so we have this called sp.test account so this test account uh, functionality in sp allows us to create um users that have public key hash public key and then what secret key or private key right so let's create a manager account called sp.test account and we call it manager just that so it's just the name you put here that's what to make differentiated from others and then let's create some registrars some initial registrars right so we call r1 is equal to sp dot test account registrar one and then i'm gonna copy this and paste it so registrar two all right two okay so um yeah and then now we can call our contract so let's say c is equal to that we initialize our contract land registrar so this is all just allowing us to test right so this is not like actually on the on the Tezos blockchain. This is just smart file environment giving us all the tools we need to run and test our chain our contract before we was um, deploy or we get a microsync code and then deploy onto the blockchain. So we'll get into that very soon. <coughs> so land register, right? And then what are the initial parameters? This is just like a Python, a normal Python class. So we have the manager, right? So manager. equals manager right and then you also have the registrars right equals now we have a list of registrars so r1 comma r2 comma r3 right so that's that 
now what i said um this sp.test account allows you to create a uh, fake tezos account right just for testing in this environment and so uh we could do some a little exploration okay so as we can see here this is a normal python list okay but what we what how we want to store the registers is not we don't want to store them as a list we want to store them as a set okay because uh so in python you will say set of this list but this is not python this is smartpy and so to to apply a set in smartpy you see you have smartpy types and operators and then when i come here i can see something called set right so to to create a set in smartpy you could have what a python list and then you call it sp.set and then you put the list in there so that's what you're going to do so you're going to create sp.set right and so now this is a set okay and now the next thing is to say scenario plus equals c so what does this mean so this scenario as i've said is a test scenario and that's what everything that displays here is the test scenario so when i say plus equals c it is only saying that it should add whatever this contract outputs to this interface here right so let me run this no oh, oh. we have an error it says registers is not defined all right and then it gives you the line smart pie line 35 okay so when you go to line 35 is a register is not defined wait a minute okay so let me run it again i think i missed it okay oh yeah yeah so actually the error is where in line 17 where we just said registers but if you remember we to get the data inside the smart contract you have to say self dot data and then dot that data and as i've said the this cell of init is where we store all our data relating to the smart contract right and so this sp contract class takes care of everything for us it just say we should just do it like this and so that's how we do it data dot registers right so let me just run this again and now we are getting a different error and so I actually wanted as i wanted us to see this error and what is it saying so what are we passing here sp dot set r1 r2 and r3 right and as i said this one is a full test account what that means what that means is that it returns three things the three things i mentioned here that's a public key private key and public key hash right but we are not allowed okay to store private key on the smart contract because then everybody will see it and once someone's your private key is exposed then it means that people can have access to your account and can execute the smart contract in your name they can take your money away and all of that so the private key needs to be private seriously and so what we need to do is to say we need to get the address and by the address i mean the public key hash right so anytime you hear address it means public key hash and yeah oh damn it okay so it's not it's no problem at all oh uh, yeah so here's a manager okay also we need to get manager those address and then we run that and wow voila we have something here right so this you know this h1 just to make sure you understand as well this h1 here is what is showing here and then the output of this contract so smart pie gives a nice output of the h contract and of this contract and there's the output of the contract you see it it outputs the the code of the contract and then it also output the storage so when you look at this contract storage <coughs> um and so this is here because of this plus c right because we are adding this contract to this uh to the scenario and this is this basically this side is what is called a scenario right and so when you look at this carefully uh you can see that whatever code we have here is what is also here and then <coughs> uh this is the 
um the registrars okay and then there's a manager so let's go here and then you can see uh this is much by this is the types so when you look at the storage the manager part right is stored as sp.t address so in smart by uh all the smart by types okay so when you go to type in smart by go to um you just you just go there and so all the types as to are, are represented sp.t something so if you have boolean sp.t bool integer sp.t int is n80 is natural number sp.t not or non negative numbers sp.t int or not so sp.t string you see you get idea right so we have uh something called tesos specific so this is related to tesos itself and you see that because tesos is a blockchain and it, and that is where we get the addresses and all of that so sp.t address right and so here's an example of yeah i think i've not shown you a tesos address up to now yeah my bad so this is an example of a tesos public address or public key hash right so it it, it, it starts with tz1 sometimes you have tz2 or tz3 and then we have the rest of this stuff here i mean if you want to let, know more about this stuff um you can visit this site right tesos.gitlab.io so when you visit tesos.gitlab.io you can know more tesos specific types stuff but most of this stuff you don't really need to know the right smart contract and right? you just need to understand how was the difference between these addresses and all of that and that's it so <clears throat> um and also when we look at see so we have the storage and then we have the entry point so entry point we have add registrar so this entry point is going to act like um an endpoint or an api endpoint and then you, later you're going to see that we can call this entry point directly and say oh, okay i want to call add register entry point and i'm i'm calling with this that that and you can interact with the smart contract not the whole smart contract but just an entry point on the smart contract All right that's nice so also when you come here <coughs> to deploy my custom contract you can actually deploy the contract from this place and we'll do that very soon just now we'll do it uh before we even continue with the rest of the application we'll just add a few after we define this remove ready trap we'll do that and so um you see the storage it tells you that like um how many bytes are we using in the storage uh, the code uh is taking 234 bytes and the combined everything is taking 405 bytes so the storage is taking 171 and the code itself is taking um 234 bytes and everything combined is 405 bytes <coughs> right and the reason why this is important is because you are charged right for the storage on tethers right so the storage goes for this this much one <coughs> byte is so let's open the calculator all right So let's say one byte right is equivalent to uh zero point zero 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 one tesos right and zero point zero zero one tesos so one tesos is three dollars right so zero point zero zero one tesos that give us zero point zero zero three dollars right and so let's say if your code is like and your data everything gets one kilobyte then we have times one thousand so that's three dollars for one for one kilobyte of uh payload over here you know so if every if something which is one kilobyte it means you have three dollars cost <coughs> right and this is going to increase as the value of tesos increases because the cost of storage is, is stated in te x te tesos not in dollars so at first it was 0 0.001 tesos and at first right it wasn't a problem really because at first one tesos was like 0 0.9 dollars right don't it was like 0 0.9 dollars and in just like um a few months now one tesos is what 
thread dollars and so you see that the cost of storage also increases right good <coughs> so um so yeah so that's one of the things you should note that your your smart contract doesn't have to store a lot of things you have to be very strategic when it comes to using smart contract to store the stuff right good. so um so when we look here we see the storage of the smart contracts this is microsim and we also see the code right so this smart spider we've written here has been compiled into this code i mean i mean this this and this place right i'm talking about this part this part is just for testing so it's not part but whatever is here has been compiled into this microsim code over here right and microsim code can actually be also converted to JSON has a JSON format right so whatever is here this is the JSON format and whatever is here the, the, the whatever is here which is because and this is a JSON format right so let's go back to SmartPy and we see a nice visual or something <coughs> also let's before we, we, we try to um, add define remove registrar let's let's um, let's try to invoke the add registrar function right so who can add a registrar is the manager who can add a registrar right now we have already have three registrars there so let's say we want to create a scenario we want to add to our scenarios that's h2 let's say add registrar so right so let's create the fourth registrar register four so we assume that output to this point we have deployed the contract and now we want to call the add registrar endpoint of the contract to add registrar four all right so r4 and so what we do the contract is c1 is c right so we just say so instead of uh we just say scenario plus equals c dot add registrar so you know in this scenario anything you append it you append here will be appended here right and so i'm just calling this contract i'm just calling this endpoint or this function in this contract which is just a class right so don't let your mind go far in fact this is just a class and so add registrar and then the add registrar i need to you see this params as I, I mentioned we can get all our data from here and so whatever i say here as maybe if i say registrar right is equal to r4 dot address remember we had an error with that right it's going to that is what is going to appear here right so if if say i'm to define something else like um uh land is equal to something then i can assess it here as params dot land right so if you want to get something from params here you have to explicitly state it here and then equals the value right so i get you i mean you get what i mean i mean right so this is the con this is the d um the endpoint add registrar and now we can't we can't finish it so we say dot run so when you go to the reference manual where it gives you the test um, tools tools for testing right to call you can call an endpoint and then you can say dot run and then you can specify the sender the source the amount and now the valid and all of that so right now let's say we are interested in the sender okay we'll look at the other ones later so dot run sender equals manager right so what it means is that in here we are simulating that the person sending the contract is this manager right this is the manager we used to initiate this contract so this manager already exists here in this contract right and so now let's run this and see what happens as so we run this and see you see that we can now scroll here because more has been added and we can see our h2 that we added here is a add registrar and then uh so this is saying we call the add registrar function and then we pass it this parameter registrar which was which who is like uh yeah just the address of the registrar and so you can see that now the registrars initially they were three 
now the storage has increased to four registries right and the manager is still uh, the same thing the same manager here right so let's try something else so instead of calling the add registrar wait uh so let's just call add registrar here let me just copy and paste here and let me just copy and paste also this right add registrar with wrong manager and let's say registrar 5 registrar 5 so registrar 5 dot address and let's say run sender equals Maybe let me create another manager and call that person wrong, right? So wrong. Uh, let me see. Yeah, this wrong. Okay, this wrong is fine. And as a wrong. Okay. So let's see what happens when I call this. We get a pop-up right and what is the pop-up saying it said unexpected error in transaction pre-use okay fine so is it dot run valid equals false so we'll come to that he said wrong condition in line 15. you see this is line 15 and this is where we are doing the verify equal the sender is equal to solve the data dot manager and say unauthorized account you're not you're not manager right so we know that this is supposed to be wrong right you know that this is supposed to be invalid this because this line because of this line because this ad register function has to be called by the manager right or has to be sent by the manager in, in this case we are not sending it with the manager we are sending it with a different account and so we know that this has to be wrong and so we have to say that valid in order to prevent the pop-up of showing we say valid equals false which we to not let smartpy know that we are expecting that this one will be a false so now let's run it again and yeah nothing pops up but when we scroll down we see that this is in red which means that there was a wrong condition on line 15 and when we go there it said unauthorized action you are not manager why because you are calling this with the wrong sender and you soon you realize that when we deploy this into actual on the onto tezos uh, blockchain itself and we don't call with the correct manager it it will give us a invalid kind of uh results okay so <coughs> Yeah, so now, so basically, what we have here is some cool authentication without even doing anything, right? So the manager is the person who has a private key of this manager guy, and that is the only person who can call this add registrar. And so by remove registrar, I'm sure you by now you know you have an idea of how to do the remove registrar. So let's just say something. So you say something like this, <coughs> right? And then and then we say self dot data dot registers uh we can just copy this part now with sets you can call you something called remove and you can remove an element from the set so dot remove and we can say params dot register Registrar, right? <coughs> and so we have also added the the remove registrar command. And so by now you are familiar with this, right? <coughs> so let's test that one too. So remove registrar. We know that only the manager is supposed to be able to remove registrar. So first of all, let's let's call the so let's call the remove registrar. With the correct manager and then later we come and call the remove registrar with the wrong manager right so remove registrar we are going to remove remove registrar <laughs> that's a mosquito disturbing us over here so. and we have a uh, 
turn this to remove and then we want to remove registrar one right so note one of these registers removed and then we are going to send manager yeah so let's run and see and yeah you see so from the start we had three registers and then we called add registrar and then we added this registrar right and then we called we intentionally called a, a remove add registrar from manager so we took it should give us an error if next time we are doing this and we don't get an error it means that there's something wrong with our code and we can go and change that and we call remove registrar removing this guy tz1 ga gz so when we come here we can see that we have tz1 ga gz here this is apparently registrar one because it's not necessarily in order it's a set so it doesn't have to be in order and now we have three registers yes so let's do this you need to do this just uh remove registrar with wrong manager right so once you do this uh in case you end up changing you know you you, you know the importance of tests so this is just a simple these are just simple tests to ensure that uh, you don't mess up your code so scenario dot remove registrar and then we say we are going to use the wrong manager right <coughs> and let's try to remove registrar 2 since registrar 1 has already been removed oh yeah so we are expecting this to be false so we say valid equals false and then yeah so when we scroll down we see remove registrar right unauthorized action you are not manager good so wrong is not manager Whew. so that <coughs> is the initial part of this contract right so now we have a registrar who can add managers and remove a, sorry have a manager who can add and remove registrars and all of that so this manager will be in charge of the contract itself adding and removing registrars and this and that and this all right okay so hopefully this will demonstrate to you like uh the use all right so this contract is good enough we can launch this contract on the tezos blockchain but we're going to launch it on the sorry on the test net so um yeah when we come here we can see storage code you can see now the code has increased in volume you know all of that and all of that a lot of things so these tabs are not really apparent but uh, <coughs> so deploy microsoft contract so when you click on deploy microsoft contract it will take you to a different uh, tab and with this tab so tezos has at any point in time tezos has three um networks running right so one is main net one is cartridge net and then one is zero net i don't know what this lab net is for but main net cartridge net and yeah something anyway so main net cartridge net and zero net so i'll explain to you what uh this main net is so main net is the main thing that's the actual tezos blockchain right and over here what whatever you do actually costs money i mean this is where like <coughs> the tezos um, crypto has value right and then cartridge net also known as test net because um and previously it was called babylon net right? so the reason why it is called cartridge net even though it actually referring to the test net is that <coughs> currently tezos is running on a protocol called cartridge right so it tezos is able to upgrade itself to new protocols and the current protocol that tezos has, has upgraded itself to is called the cartridge protocol and so the test net for that cartridge protocol is the cartridge net 
Now, in, on this cartridge net, I mean, that doesn't matter, but the important thing is that on this cartridge net, you can play with every, anything you want, all the teasers you want and all of that. And you can actually get free teasers and all of it to play with. And it doesn't have any value. Like, it's just a place where you can, it's just a playground, which is also like a blood clean network on its own. I mean, but it's just a playground so that you can test your applications there. If your application works on the cartridge net, that means if you deploy it to the main net, it will work there, right? So right now we just select cartridge net. Good. And then you're asking us because we, we say we want to deploy a contract, right? And in Tezos terms, it's called origination, direct network contract origination, right? So we are going to originate this contract onto the cartridge net. We could have originated to main net, but we are just playing with it. So we're going to uh, cartridge net. We test it over there. And then once everything is working well, we go to cut main net. But for now, cartridge net. And then um, to be able to do anything on Tezos, actually, you need a Tezos account. And by Tezos account, I mean, you have the Tezos public key hash, you have private key, and then you have public key. All right. So we need a private key account and an account, right? So on the cartridge net, you can actually generate some. So here you see that we have um, the smart pie wallet, a ledger wallet, and then plain text keys, right? So if you look at here very well, we have something called the wallet. So we're going. I'm going to open this in a new tab, and then from the wallet, I'm going to create a wallet. Okay. So let's go to faucet account. Let me go to faucet importer, right? So since we are on the cartridge net, um, Tezos to make development easy, right? Tezos actually like have this kind of way that you can get a free account or a quick account. We are going to try to get three different accounts, All right? So it's a get test net, right? So this account will work on the test net, which I would explain that it is actually what is being called a cartridge net. So we copy this. And then we come and paste it here right and so when we paste this here then we say we click on compute your private key and so this is our private key right and then we say save in wallet account right so it will make it easier for us to do things with this later and then we say it's on the cartridge net so we say activate account <clears throat> so for the account to be recognized on the blockchain so this account are actually generated off the chain right so the way account generation happens is that uh, the private key and the public key are generated it's not like the teasers um, network generated for you but you generate it off out of, outside of the network as once you generate it outside of the network you have to let the network know that oh i've generated these keys and the way the number of possibilities it's too much so much so that no two keys will ever be the same i mean the probability is low so we've activated our account you wait a little while and then you reveal you click on account and then it says revelation okay so once that's done uh now we'll see Yeah. So right now with this contract that we are about to deploy, all right. When we look here, we look at the storage. It says that the so storage. This must be the the, the manager's uh, public key hash, and this is the public key hashes of the of the certifiers that we have, right? The initial certifiers. Okay. But now we want to use this word just for testing. You want to use what we want is instead of using this guy, right? I'm going to comment this out. Then you get what I'm trying to do. So mm -hmm. 
so let's go ahead and then come here so you see that we have the the public key hash here let's go ahead and copy this public key hash right and say that one is a sp dot address and say that one is for the manager okay and then let's do let's create maybe three extra accounts right uh let me say two extra accounts so let's create two extra accounts and then yeah so that's just that's okay that's enough for now good good so when i run this oh yeah so sorry yep and then so i need to change this and run this outer is going to find yep outer is going to find and run good so i need a scenario plus equals c and then we can see the others right so in this case we have intentionally copied the account from here because this is this is what we are going to use on the on the for the origination but this also is available on the test net or the cartridge net so we need to use that for the manager right because this account the initial ones that we have here uh, is for just for like uh, testing purposes and it, it is not available on the cartridge net or on the test net but this one is what we just imported here and so that's what we are going to use right so let me go ahead and close this guy and then go to deploy microsoft contract and then click on deploy again and so now when we come here we see that our manager address is actually this address right and then we have our other fake address down for that we don't really care about it so <clears throat> And then also, I already have some fake addresses that I've generated from here. So let me just go there and just say, click on this guy so we can use the public key hash for this guy. All right, okay. So that's that. So now let's go. So retrieve, faucet, or implicit. So when you click, uh retrieve faucet and it says select account right so this is this the account we created from here and because we added saved into our wallet we can get it directly from here so close so now this is the guy right so we have an account that we are going to use to deploy the contract okay so now i click on deploy contract and then of course this thing come so when you look at the contract it says the JSON encoding no script no script so actually this is it you see if you see, look at the script part it has removed the code aspect from it and you say the storage it talks about the storage right and then the argument so this is what is going to send to the Jesus uh, blockchain right and this one is the full encoding with the, the the script right so as I mentioned earlier the contract is made up of the data and then the the, the, the code itself right so when you look at the script you look at the code then you can see like this is what is actually telling what deciding what to be done and then when we scroll we can see the storage and all of that all right. good so oh so deploy sorry and then accept <coughs> and then to say deploying contract Oh, sorry. So we need to change this to cartridge net, right? Because we are doing we are deploying a cartridge net. So deploy. Because this account, <coughs> even we need to change that, because this account that we are using is an, an account on the cartridge net, and so it was even as error because it wasn't recognizing it. Right? 
accept and is deploying a contract and yo now our contract has been originated as we can see <clears throat> so every contract on the on our blockchain on the blockchain has um an address right just like normal accounts have an address addresses contracts also have addresses and anyone with a normal account that a tz account like this something that looks like this can originate a contract right and so this is the, the address of the originated contract and just as initially we went to somewhere better call dev if i go to better call dev it says search anything search for this contract you see it this is where we deployed it just now it says a few seconds ago right so when i click on it we will actually see what we have here um when we go to the storage we will see you see amazing right <laughs> so now this is on the blockchain and we can explore it right because i use i'm using a different explorer or i deployed from somewhere and i'm using a different explorer so that's to tell you that actually it's working and everything right so you can see the things that we wrote on authorized action and so this is the, this is one of the important things with blockchain to, with writing smart contracts your code is available for the public to view and this is the one of the strength of teasers because um with smart contract problem like ethereum and all that the code on the blockchain itself is kind of byte code right so zeros and ones no so that's what that's one of the um things that teasers learned from previous platforms and decided to say oh let's go with this thing that someone can actually read and actually this is so it's it's, it's such that you can actually prove certain theory certain properties about it using a certain uh proof engine right they call it cork assistant or something right? i mean that's not that's messy stuff that i've not really even gone into it myself so uh i mean we are okay with this right and this is so neat everyone can read it and understand i mean any expert can read and understand you know uh so that's one of the good cool things about uh tezos right the code is on the blockchain and it's readable it's not in byte code so uh yeah so actually from here we find that uh okay let me go there let me see whether it allows me to interact with the contract right good it allows me to interact with the contract you see so we see we, we defined add registrar and we define remove registrar right So actually, better code has a lot of things that they are bringing in place. These are cool stuff. You can actually play with your contracts over here. So yeah, so let's let's continue. Let's not go uh, off topic. So let's. So now there's another thing called Explorer, right? So in the same smart pie, you see we can open contract in Explorer. But let me just open it from here too. So so we go to the Explorer. Right, when we go to the explorer, so and anyway, this smart smart pie explorer allows you to explore any contract at all. So it's just like the better core dev, but so actually, if I say use wallet, okay. So when I go here, I can say save contract in wallet and to save the contract in my wallet. Um, so I'll just say, uh, what land red register version one right and i'll say import okay so now let me close this and go here so instead of maybe pasting here directly i can say use wallet and then select the contract and say land register version one import uh, so just to make things easier for you so when you use if you continue using the same um kind of browser it is going to remember everything that you're doing because it's storing the stuff in your um, you know storing the stuff here in your local yeah so 
you can see that it's stored all the contract you have here so you can actually if you're using the same browser every time then you can always have this so for me i use the same browser and if it's, it's it remembers it's fine just don't clear your cookies <laughs> so uh so when i say explore smart by notes right so i wait and yep so contract data right right so this is a manager so you remember we generated the manager from this side right and then this is the private key of the manager we generated right okay okay that's good and then we stored this manager in the in the wallet okay so we can see this it, it tells a data about the contract like okay this is the address of the contract this is the balance of the contract so a contract also has balance in, in terms of tables and you can send money and in, in and out of the contract but that's the point of this and the manager and then the registrars we have to register mm, so there's they are even given us some extra explorer called the tzk tzkt.io and it's also an explorer oh man account doesn't exist okay if you've not seen it yet then be there anyway ah never mind yeah issue does it okay so um it tells us some things about the data but that's not the yes so what we are looking for is the operation builder right and when i click here you see we have all the endpoints here we have the add register endpoint we have the remove register endpoint right so when we come to the add register endpoint remember the the input it takes was was what the params was the register right and so that is why it has given us one um kind of space here to enter the register so we can enter a fake register account a fake account like this right it doesn't matter just enter something uh and i put it there <clears throat> and i said I've, again if you need to do anything on tizos blockchain whether i want to send money or invoke or call a contract a function in a contract you need to have your private key and since we've done that already here with this account right and this you remember this is the account we use for the manager right good good so once we do that once you we set this you need to say build parameters and then you need to fill this part for you okay other than that you have to remember this and it's, it's not nice so once everything is done you could send transaction <coughs> of course of course yes we've seen it so this is the transaction so the destination is the contract right so it's like you're calling a contract and you're saying no you're not sending it to you right and then we have the gas limit the counter the fee i mean these are all these are specific stuff and we have the source that's who is calling the contract right and then we have the kind transaction right and then parameters so entry point default so in this case it's seen as the the add seeing the add register entry point as default so later we're going to contact remove register and you see what i'm trying to say here and then the string right so this is the data it's just something like really really it's just like communicating with an api like a normal api right so when i click accept it is sending whatever and it says status applied and then it tells you the result the content can kind of transaction whatever whatever and this thing right actually they are using certain libraries but right? so they are using the console js right console js is a javascript library that allows you to communicate directly with the tzos uh blockchain right so you see that from the browser directly from the browser they are doing all of this they're actually using console.js behind the scene right and another tzos uh, javascript library that allows you to 
communicates with Jesus Lord and is what is called a Jesus Takito or as I call it a Takirito right so the Jesus Takito is also I find that one also quite, quite interesting to do right so these are JavaScript libraries that can allow so you can build like a web application on top of your smart contract of course which is something you need to do because I mean in, other than that a normal user can't use your smart contract right so um where are we i think yeah so let's explore the contract so it's run the contract so now let's go and explore this let's let's go and explore this guy right and he said this was the origination so when initially when you're putting this contract on the blockchain he said it's it is called origination right and then you said just a minute ago we called ad registrar right so this is on the meta core dev uh, it's really cool right don't you think <clears throat> and the ad registrar what happened so you can see that whatever is highlighted in green is what 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 was added right so this this guy here was just added right here right so the ad registrar in fact you can see like so this is a really really good contract explorer hmm. this is interesting stuff right good and then again you can look at the storage directly and you can see that now we have three items right and the manager is there and then we have the code and then we can interact with the registrar you know interesting stuff <laughs> so man so so i think <coughs> although there are a lot of things to them in there with, with time with the time I'm, I'm, i don't think i'll be able to complete the whole land registrar application right now but i mean I'm just excited that at least I've been able to get to this level or this point because from here everything is kind of simple. I will do it as fast as we can. So, um, yep. So now in this case we use the manager's account to deploy it to send the transaction right or to call this endpoint. So let's go ahead and create a new account, right? let's go ahead create a new account so yeah you can always get an account please drink responsibly and compute private key it gives us a different private key i save it in wallet good so cartage note activate account Once you send the activation, you have to just wait a little bit, all right? To mm -hmm. Mm. and then we reveal. All right. So now when we come back here to the explorer, now let's change. You know, note that this this address is the address of the manager right even just looking at tz1ui you see tz one ui this address is the address of the manager so let's change this to the new address that we we created one dpq or something something all right and then <clears throat> let's just try to use another you know fake uh one of our fake accounts so home hmm. Name this this guy and yeah replace this guy so let's say we, we are adding register right so we build the transaction parameters <coughs> and it changes everything here then we send a transaction so it's sending transaction and accept error while sending transaction to contract temporary right and we've not done anything wrong we are actually using the uh, the cartridge net whatever but it's giving us an error and why do you think of that because we are using the wrong uh, we are hitting this error right here this one right unauthorized action so 
Yeah, so we are expecting that this is error was rejected. Yeah. So now we know why the script has been rejected because we are using the wrong like manager. Alright. So this is not the manager. And so this is the kind of the level of uh, authentication you get out of the box with a smart contract, right? <sighs> That's cool. Alright, so let's just close all of these guys and then go back to complete our smart contract and let's comment out this guy so we are going to use this guy to set parameters for deployment and then we're going to use this guy for testing okay hmm. so now let's go on ahead and also register uh, do the land we create a data structure called lands and the way we want to store lands is lands should have owners right so we just want to we just want to be simple here and say oh okay um where is this thing yeah so let's just be simple here and say something like uh you know that doesn't like uh, as we've already said a land is represented with four points okay longitude and longitude latitude right but for now we'll just use integers x like on a plane on your xy plane right so a land is just a square on the plane all right so this could be maybe one x is one and then y is two x is five y is three you know x is four six so it's still five y is six and then still one and y is still six so we just represent the land with four points on the plane right four integers four points on the plane and this point are just in the yes point so what we want to say is that and then land also belong to opponents so land and then lands have what owners these owners are users on the Tezos blockchain who have their public key was hashes right so what we are going to do is that uh, once the land is registered on the chain, okay, we are going to give kind of like a unique ID to the land, and then so we are going to give a unique ID to the land. Let's call that one code, just a string. And then the coordinate we're going to call the code the four point you are going to call them a b c and what d all right good so let's go ahead and implement that so land so we are going to have a lot of lots of land and because of that we have mentioned that we're going to have lots of land we are going to use some sort of something called the map right a map or in python we know this as um a dictionary right so in so when we go to the smart by types and operations um maps and big maps as we can see and then we have sp.map but we are interested in this is maps but we want to use the big map a big map is a big map right we want to we want because we are expecting that there will be a lot lots of land and the world is made full of lands so initialize a map you say sp.big map and then you talk about the key and then the value okay so sp.big underscore map and then we have the first parameter called t key 
and this t key is because it says the type of the key right so is it a string is it a boolean or whatever right and so what we plan to do intend to do is to have a data structure like this mm, where is it? okay yeah we do have a data structure like this where we have something like this and then like the code the code of the land is here and then some data about the land right is also here and the data about the land that we are going to store is like a list of owners of wait for now let's say we store store the the coordinate a of the land so let's just call it a right and then we store the b of the land and the c of the land and the d of the land all right a b all right simple so let's go and implement that so the land the key is sp dot t string so we we are going to say that we are going to assign a unique code to each land and this unique code is a string okay and the the value is what is called we are going to use something called a t record right so you can think of the t record as so let's go here and you see what is this So records, yeah, they records in SmartPy after record where tags in Python dict of SmartPy tags in this, whatever. So they generalize the Microsoft pair uh, record. So basically, it allows you to say, you know, in Python, like this would be like if you have a tuple, you have to assess it by the index, right? Or if you have a ledger, you have to assess it by the index. But if you have a, a, a dictionary, you have to you can assess it by the keys, right? So the record is kind of the same thing. You can assess the elements in the records by their keys but in this case you predefine the keys right so let me explain what i'm saying so i'm going i'm going to have to predefine the keys in this record i'm going to say a and i'm going to say sp dot t string the a meaning that the coordinate a right and so actually you can do this and then b sp dot t string and then c sp dot t string so we are planning to no we want to use integers so let's say just um t int is fine right so t int so ideally maybe we should be using strings and then we can convert those strings so actually when we come here we have types we have like a strings like a primary so they have integer string right it doesn't seem like they have something like a decimal or you know those kind of guys there we had to start that so so for now we could we could either implement it with string and not be limited or we are just going to use the integer and be limited i mean of course latitude and longitudes uh, oh wait wait sorry so actually so so a here is supposed to be a pair right x y because it's a coordinate on the plane so x y and so we have just a thing for that smart contract where are you pairs all right and then the way to define a pair is sp dot pair right and then you say t1 and t2 so let's do that so sp dot pair so t pair
and then the type is integer sp dot int you know sp dot sorry t int so that's how it's going to be for the rest of them so we can just copy and paste right sorry about that so good 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 huh. yeah <clears throat> so we have our land so the land so let's go over this data structure again so the land itself all the lands are stored in a big map right and each of the land has something called a code so we assign a code to the land and each code each land also has the coordinates right which we choose to say a b we just call them a b c and d okay and so that is exactly what we've created here so of course in smart i need to define your data like that ahead of time so there's a big map right so a big map so a big map so let me just push this down so good so the map and so it can contain several copies of this guy right say so code to and code one yeah good great so several several copies okay and yeah so that's what we have here so a is a pair right as you can see this is a pair this is a pair this is a pair this is a pair and so just to verify that we don't have anything wrong <laughs> so you, you what you realize is that we didn't initialize we, we are not adding the lands to this in its field because we, we don't need to initialize that we just need to define the type of land the type the data structure that's what we need that's what we need to do <coughs> sorry so this is not t val this is t value and then let's run this good and we have a it's working so let's go to the deploy smart contract and then let's look at the storage right no wait let's look at the types good so this is what we see so we look at looking at the types we see lands and then it's a big map and inside the big map the key is a string right which is the unique code we plan to assign to each land and then the pair is the sp dot pair sp dot pair sp dot pair right right so we have something going on here <laughs> so good that's sweet that's sweet so mm -hmm. so everything is in place so now we can define our ad land all right so i think when we define this sp dot entry point and def add land Woo. so self and then params <clears throat> and then we assume that you know the user a normal user right a land owner right has registered their land and now they want to you know add it to our blo uh, blockchain so even in fact think of it we need to also have a data structure for land owners right yeah land and owner owners right and so how do you think we should store land owners well that one is also going to be sp dot map so we couldn't use sp dot big map because you can't use two big maps right yeah you can't use two big maps in in tezos so we just use sp dot map and we expect that you know there'll be more land owners there'll be more land than land than land owners or something i don't know so the few few land owners in this world maybe a thousand land owners but let's just say we are not thinking about this very well 
but anyway so you need to also define it the type of the key and that is sp dot t uh, address so the land owners have the address and then t value right is we are going to dis define it as sp dot t list and sp dot t list mm, a list which is made up of strings so let's just go here list so yeah sp dot t list so we can say we want a list made up of strings so sp dot type sorry sp dot t string right so that's sweet Sorry, what? What? Yeah, dev test. Expected intended blocks. Mark line 43. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, that's just Python. So let's do pass here and then see if we don't have any problem. Yeah, so we don't have any problem. So when we look at types here, we have our land owners. For our land owners, we have the, the address as the key for the land owners. And a list of strings so this string actually is like the string of the land right that the person owns okay great great so yeah so we'll add land so we just want to be able to add land first so when we are adding land we are adding the land for a land owner so we need something like params we need to have something like params dot owner and we also need to have something like params dot dot who dot land and this dot land should contain all the necessary data needed to fill this land kind of thing right Good. so let's get to it so again who can add land so the people can add land at the registrars, right? So it's only the registrars who can add lands. So <coughs> let's say something like uh, sp dot verify. So we have verify equal, and then we have verify. So verify, we pass in a condition here, right? And this condition, and then the message is equal to you must be a registrar right so the condition here is we want to say we want to check is whether the sender of this uh sp dot sender is a registrar right so what we are going to say is self and registrar is what a set so let's go here and let's look at something here so when we look at sets it has something called contains and it will check whether an element is in that set so we know what to do we say um sp dot registrar registrars sorry self dot data dot registrars dot contains right sp dot sender sweet and if it doesn't happen that way we're gonna ignore you so let's let's immediately we can test so so add land and you have scenario plus equals c dot add land yep and then to add a land so let's create a fake user so land owner is equal to sp dot test count land owner uh yeah so land owner and uh And then we need to define the land itself so to do that we use a python dictionary and then we are going to say 
something like the land code maybe it's a b c so if you know about your coding you know that we can give each piece of land a specific numeric code or alphanumeric code right so for instance if you're familiar with uh, um we have some certain apps like snow code and even in ghana here we have like an app that gives specific locations to specific like names to specific locations right so this is quite simple so we can do this for every land and we can have our own system but for now let's just assume that we have a code right a way of assigning codes to each land and then we have the a let's say it's one comma two okay. we have a b right three comma four i mean i don't think this is making a square but if you have three point four points in space it should be a square yeah if you have four points in square it's very square four comma three no it shouldn't be a square but you know it should be like sorry sorry uh, five comma four right um all right so that's all we need for land good good okay so that's all we need for land and we will say so since we want to say param dot owner and param dot land we are going to say owner is equal to land underscore owner and we want the address of the owner don't forget this this could call frustrate you and then land right and then we say this should be so we can run this and the sender can be any of the registers right so let's assume we are using registrar one which would have been removed by now so let's say registrar Three, right register 3 is not removed because over here somewhere we are removing register 1 so yeah that would have been a disaster so what we have here is we verify that oh indeed the data contains whatever you know i mean the person is a registrar and this seems to work right and to let's just all right so um we take out the land the code from this place and then put it here and that's also a problem for us so now we can access also the code from params.code in this place right we just want to separate it so that we can easily do this okay so <coughs> all right so what we are going to do is say sp sorry so i mean this line says of course it's a register it's a registrar that is calling this function and so the next thing is we can then add the land self dot data dot land lands right and <coughs> you say lands okay is equal to and now you see that the the key the land has a key and so that key is what is supposed to be the code or as that code that we've used here and then we are going to equals we are going to set it to sp and then the value is a record right so to create a record actually let's see so this is just declaring the type but to create actually create a record you have to use you know this thing so sp dot record and the field so our first field was a right so a equals params dot a isn't it oh no params of a because we are talking about the dictionary here and b equals params of b and c equals params of c 
uh, last one d equals params of d right so then before anything let's just run this and see what happens okay So it seems we are hitting this error, and um, the reason for this, so we are missing this. So we params dot land, right? Not just land, but params dot just params dot params dot land, because yeah, we want to access the land in params, and yeah, I mean, so there's land, so we're supposed to say params dot land, and so when we run this. So initially we see the land when it's key value and the key sometimes some long stuff and uh, what we have here after we do the add land we see we have the code ABCD and then we have a key value so A is 1 2 B is 3 2 4 is 4 3 and, and, and so on and so forth and let's see how this land actually looks like you know Oh, I mean, we, there's no way to do that, so let me just forget about it. So anyway, I'm sure this is some sort of rectangular. No, it's not rectangular because I don't know. It's, but it should look weird, though. <sighs> so but that's not the only thing. Once we add the land, we also need to add the owner. And then we need to say that this land belongs to this owner, right? So now let's say we've added the land. Now we say self dot data dot land owners owners equals and it's a map so we need to say something like that and then sp dot sorry params dot owner right remember we need to pass the owner the land owner <coughs> And then that's equal to uh, sp dot. We have a list, so we just say pound dot owner equals uh, so we are not got a list. So we need to think about this well, right? Because you have a list, and it's possible that. Uh, so when we do something like okay, <clears throat> we have a list. So I mean, first, uh, my bad. So let's change this from a list to a map uh, to a set. Now makes things much, <coughs> much easier, right? So we can just say. Because then, of course, uh, an owner can and can't go that same land twice so let's just see um, now nah. <coughs> uh, dot add right it's because it's a set we are referring to and then we'll see params dot code right and uh, uh, uh. sp dot address is not found at land Landowner dot address. Oh yeah. So yeah, so it's complaining because I mean we are trying to assess a map, a value in the map which does not exist, and we are trying to in fact assess that value there, right? So what we should be doing is <coughs> First of all, let's let's do this. Let's see, sp. So I want to now not introduce to sp dot. So yes, you can do if and all of that. 
so any if you want to do control flow statement you need to do use sp dot something so sp dot if sp dot for sp dot while it all works so we want to check if we already have this land owner right dot contains sp sorry params dot owner right so if this owner exists then we can actually this code is valid right and this code is valid else so we don't see else we see sp dot else self dot data dot land honest right of params dot owner so because we are now setting it to say equals sp dot set and then we just say something like params dot code so we are just creating a set with one element right but then after that set after this is done then we can just easily add right so that's why we're having the error hopefully that's why we're having the error so sp dot if self dot data dot land owners contains params dot owner okay yeah it should make sense and yeah <laughs> it works right so now we have the land owners and then we have the lands and then we have the manager and then we have the registers right so we can write some more tests and this this is where i'll leave you guys because uh, we've done most of the things here so let's just write extra tests right so okay what if we try to um, so let's think of some scenarios so add land so let's try to add add land with wrong right add land with wrong wrong register right so this is a test we are writing just for feature sake so in case something happened right and uh, all of this code will be stored in our github account and actually i'm going to develop a nice ui for it and all of that and maybe do a an extended youtube tutorial so but i mean you know you can just go and try to complete this right but because our our objectives were once the land is registered now land owners will be able to sell pieces of their land right to other users on the on the platform so that is something else that we've not done right but that should be possible and i don't want to bore you because i've, I've spent a lot of time already so i'll just put all of that like it have repo and you can go look at it all right so so we add land with wrong registrar so let's say wrong registrar all right and sp.test account Oh, okay, we have the wrong even account there already. That's this one. So we can just use that. All right. And let's just try to run this code again. But, right. So, um, land owner run, send on three. So we are going to run. So we are going to copy this code. And then we are going to. But instead of sender r3 we're going to do with the wrong account that we created this account hasn't been registered anywhere so it's the wrong guy we are going to get oh you must be a registrar and so we need to use that uh, valid equals false and we'll say something like that and that and by that you know you get this so yeah and the features left is now we can register we can register land the other features left 
how to be able to sp dot en3 point def you'll be able to to sell land all right self and then params and this which will be able to have the params the params will be something like params you know this okay this is something you, you should do <coughs> you know params that does uh, you have params dot params dot maybe coordinates so this coordinates will contain maybe like a exactly like a you know b and you see to, to just give coordinates so someone can sell maybe part of their land so for instance this guy who has one and so one two a is one two b is three two four b c is uh four three and d is five four right maybe they should be able to sell a, a portion within this coordinate right so a b uh c and d so suppose it, if it turns out to be i don't know but let's try to sketch this so one two where, where do you think one two be so let's say one two let's assume one two is here that's x is one and y is two let's assume that's here then that means uh three two x is three <coughs> so x is three will be somewhere here and y is two right good and then x is four y is three so x is four no x is four but y is three so let's say something like this and then five four right so x is five and y is four so let's say something like this so you can have yeah hey i said it oh no i didn't say anything so maybe the person can decide to sell maybe just this part of their their land right and that that is the coordinate we are going to receive here and so we need to be able to do some type, kind of checking to see like if indeed this coordinate falls within this part of the land and then we need to create another data structure to keep records of all the transactions that are happening right and all of this could be done on some other smart contracts or you could just do it here you know for a mini implementation but yeah we sell the land so one thing we could add about for land it's say each land should have like a price right so the owner can price your land and it's a sp dot uh t and right so you can price your land here and then yeah so look so a lot of things can be done here and um, yeah interesting stuff right so all of this will be implemented and put onto the github repo which i believe is uh, is here wait let me pull it out let me pull it out so my github repo if you go to github repo yeah and then pycon 2020 right so back to see github repo pycon 2020 you should see this and i have this set guy yeah and then I have the contra.py and in here it's a view app that is going to interact with the contra.py py right so you see all of that there um nice too i'm very glad to have uh, been able to share what i have learned so far with you and hopefully um you've learned something <laughs>